can see a lot of excitement. Anybody from any sets at this morning? Yeah, a few. I know somebody who was up at the front of town. Now, there might be more Easter eggs to find in a little moment, but first, I say, we say a prayer. We just sit and we close our eyes and speak to God. There's also a little response on your service sheet that is very simple. When I say Alleluia, if you please repeat Alleluia. So let's pray. On Easter Day, we join together to celebrate the mystery of resurrection. The angel declares, he is not here, he is risen to the women who came to anoint his body. We still do not understand the great mystery of Easter, and yet we believe that the tomb was empty, and that Jesus is risen, that God is with us, here, everywhere, all the time. Alleluia. Alleluia. Like the women on that Easter day, we might doubt the angel's words, we might be afraid, we might be wondering what it all means. And so we come seeking solace and reassurance from God, the one who made us, who loves us, and to make us to love the world in turn. Alleluia. Alleluia. And so we come humbly before you, risen God, full of hope and wonder. We come also aware of the mistakes we have made, the hurts we have caused, and we ask for your forgiveness. You, God, promise us your never-ending love, your mercy and your forgiveness. And we come to trust in your promise. Alleluia. Transform us and send us out into the world to share the good news of your love, that Jesus is risen. Alleluia. And together we pray in the words Jesus taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Now, I set a little challenge for Easter. I asked, those of you who want it to make a flower, I see a few already. So those of you who have made flower, do you want to bring it to the garden and show us? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Five dance. Oh, this is wonderful. Look at that. <laughs> Just put them here and we'll look at them in turn. What has this got? Look at this wonderful sunflower! Yeah. Fantastic! Do you want to hold yours so people can see what you've made and you hold yours? You hold yours? What have you got? This is lovely, a bit of origami. Lovely. Beautiful! Now, let's come You think? Lovely, beautiful. Ah. Oh, very nice. With the help of granddaughters, and Willie's got one too. Also with that. Oh, well done, well done, Willie. <laughs> that's beautiful. So that's false. With Easter egg. Yeah, Margaret, what have you got? Lovely. How's that? Is that so? Lovely, it's a fabric one. Ooh, beautiful. It's an oil, all pastels. Pastels, look at that. Beautiful, well done. And how come what have you got? This is lovely. Did you make it yourself? No. <laughs> Oh, lovely. Well, our thanks to Becky for making that. 
Now, Finley, I can see a flower as well. Yes, I didn't make it though, as well. Ah, well. <laughs> and I can see loads of you dressed very flowery as well, which is lovely. So, well done, everyone, for making flowers. Now, why do you think we were thinking about flowers this morning? What happens with flowers in springtime? They grow, and where are they before? That's right, they were under the soil and did so seeds, weren't they? Or the bulbs. And when they had the bulbs or the seeds, there wasn't very much light in them, was there? But at least it didn't look like it. But then when they had some warmth, some sunshine, some rain, and they had some soil, what happened? They grew. They grew and they burst into life. And that's what we celebrate at Easter, new life, don't we? Because we believe that Jesus was put in his tomb, and after three days, when some of his friends and his mom went to the tomb and looked, the stone that was in front of the tomb had been rolled away. And they found an angel sitting there. And the angel said, He's not here, he is risen to new life. And later on, they would see Jesus, and Jesus was had to come back to the
times in the stained glass window of the church. <laughs> One picture is worth a thousand words, but you will have to, if you find it easier to look at the picture rather than to look at me, I can't understand it. <laughs> Both from the Gospels. The first is written in the book of Mark, and it's Mark chapter 16, verses 1 to 8. Gospel according to Mark. After the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome brought black spices to go and anoint the body of Jesus. Very early on Sunday morning at sunrise, they went to the tomb. On the way, they said one to another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance? It was a very large stone. Then they looked up and saw that the stone had already been rolled back. So they entered the tomb where they saw a young man sitting on the right, wearing a white robe. And they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. I know you are looking for Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He is not here. He has been raised. Look, here is the place where they put him. Now go and give this message to his disciples, including Peter. He is going to Galilee ahead of you. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and ran from the tomb, distressed and terrified. They said nothing to anyone, because they were afraid. And to follow this in the book of John, chapter 20, reading until verse 18. The Gospel of Lord to John. Early on Sunday morning, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance. She went running to Simon Peter and the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, They have taken the Lord from the tomb and we don't know where they have put him. Then Peter and the other disciple went to the tomb. The two of them were running, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and reached the tomb first. He went over and saw the living wrappings, but he did not go in. Behind him came Simon Peter, and he went straight into the tomb. He saw the living wrappings lying there, and the cloth which had been ripped around Jesus' head. It was not lying with the linen wrappings, but was run up by itself. Then the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went in. He saw and believed, but still did not understand the scripture which said that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back home. Mary stood crying outside the tomb. While she was still crying, she bent over and looked in the tomb and saw two angels there, dressed in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been, one at the head and the other at the feet. Woman, why are you crying? And they asked her. She answered, They have taken my Lord away, and I do not know where they have put him. Then she turned round and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not know that it was Jesus. Woman, why are you crying? Jesus asked her. Who 
appreciate that you are looking for. She thought he was the gardener. So she said to him, If you took him away, sir, tell me where you have put him, and I will go and get him. Jesus said to her, Amen. She turned towards him and said in Hebrew, Rabboni, this means teacher. Do not hold on to me, Jesus told her, because I have not yet come back up to the Father. But go to my brothers and tell them that I am returning to him who is my Father and their Father, my God, and their God. So Mary Magdalene went and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and related to them what he had told them. We sing again from number 410. Jesus Christ is risen today.
full of color. It sometimes feels as if you can watch the plants grow day by day. Our house looks a little bit like a greenhouse at the moment, but with all the seedlings and flowers that we've sown or we planted. I can't wait to finally put them outside and see them grow and burst into color. Outside, there's bird song in the air, the lambs are cajoling in the fields, and some of our farmers are also welcoming calves just at the moment. Spring is a time of promise, a time of potential, when anything seems possible. It's no coincidence that we celebrate Easter at this time of the year, that we all celebrate new life. And today is lovely, with all the decorations, the flowers, and perhaps even an Easter egg or two later on. And tomorrow, and next week, will Easter still matter to us then? Or will we have forgotten all about it? Easter is not only about today. It carries a message and a meaning for all of life. It's something so momentous that while we can celebrate it on this special day, in the church we dedicate a whole season to it that lasts a whole seven weeks. And it could be argued that everything we do is about Easter, that we are an Easter church. The events of Easter are huge. Just put yourself in the shoes of these first disciples about whom we heard a moment ago. Mary Magdalene and Salome and Mary, the mother of James. Friends and disciples of Jesus who have spent years with him, traveled with him, learned from him, ministered with him. And the second Mary is not only the mother of James, but the mother of Jesus too. The same Mary from the Nativity story so long ago. Imagine her grief. How horrendous it must have been for her to see her son die and die in such a cruel way. After the crucifixion, the disciples scattered and hid away for fear of being arrested too. And then there was the Sabbath day, the day of rest and of quiet. And then on the first day of the new week, when the Sabbath was over, the women ventured out from their hiding place to go and anoint the body of Jesus. And imagine what it would have been like for them finding the stone room away from the tomb entrance, and the tomb itself empty. In Mark's Gospel, we hear how they see a young man dressed in white who tells them that Jesus has been raised. In John's Gospel, the story is somewhat elaborated on. There we find that Mary Magdalene sees two angels within the tomb, and meets a man outside whom she doesn't recognize. It's only when he speaks to her that she realizes that he is Jesus, the risen Christ who is standing before her. And he who is risen, who has overcome death, tells Mary Magdalene to go and tell the other disciples. He makes her, in effect, the very first preacher of the gospel. Now I'm not always simple faith. It is a core belief that we all gain eternal life through the sacrifice of Jesus and through his resurrection. Now that is anything but simple. When someone dies, particularly someone we love, their life with us is ended. And yet they live on, don't they? In our memories, and what they taught us, and what we know because of them, in the love that continues in all of their legacy. 
beyond that? Well, who can say? And yet, what we hear in these stories of Easter morning is that life continues, that there is life after death, life with God. It's what Jesus tells us, even as he is on the cross, I promise that even today you will be with me in paradise. Something that is so difficult for us to grasp simply because we don't know, because we can't know, we can only trust and believe. I know that when I was a little girl, after my beloved granddad died, I was sure that I could still talk to him, that he was looking after me. Now, I grew up in a non religious family. And nobody had talked to me about heaven or about paradise. It was just something that I was sure about. Is it true? I don't know. We can't know. It is definitely a comforting thought, though. It can be consoling to us when we are grieving. And it is what Jesus is promising us. So why wouldn't we believe it? even if it's something that is beyond proof for us. In his sacrifice, Jesus also offers us forgiveness and the chance to start over, no matter what mistakes we have made, no matter what hurts we have caused. We are given a chance to ask for forgiveness, to make amends, to learn and to start over. Is that not like a new life too? And here is the wonderful news. You don't need to have made mistakes in order to start over, to be given a chance for new life. All of us are offered new life every day. Corny as it may sound, today is the first day of the rest of our lives. What is it that makes you feel happy? That makes you feel fulfilled and inspired? What is it that makes you feel fully alive? Of course, all of us have responsibilities and obligations. And all of us have opportunities to live life more fully. No matter if you're six years old or 16 or 46 or 86. Each one of us can make every day count. We all know that life is short. And we each can make most of the number of days and years that we have been given. No matter what that looks like for us individually. God gives us new life at Easter and every single day. And that really is something for which it is worth to shout hallelujah. Amen. Our next hymn is number 417. Now the green bag rider. <coughs>
joined together in prayer again, we have another short response to our prayers. When I say the words, God of life, would you please respond with the words, hear our prayer. So let us pray. You, God, give us everything. You give us life. You give us new life through your Son, Jesus Christ, who is risen. We are indeed an Easter church, a resurrection church. And we thank you for your never-ending graciousness and love for us. As we bring to you what we can offer, we pray that all our offerings will be used wisely and with courage for the good of the world. God of life, hear our prayer. Life-giving God, we thank you for all you give us, for all that makes our lives richer, more fulfilled, for all that inspires us and encourages us, all that challenges us to be the best we can, to be who you made us to be. We thank you for all that makes life worth living, for every joy experienced and shared, for every comforting word and gesture, for every kindness extended. God of life, yeah. Life giving God, almost 2,000 years after that first Easter day, we are still just learning what it means to be your beloved children. We are still discovering more and more about the depth of your love and your desire to walk with us day by day. We are thankful for all the women and men who face their fears and their doubts and bravely share the story of resurrection. We are thankful to all who share your message of life and of love for all, then and now. God of life, we are our prayer. Your love is needed as much as ever today. Help us to be the witnesses to your love in all that we do and say, sharing your love with the world. God of life, hear our prayer. Today we pray with all people, known and unknown to us, who face physical, emotional or spiritual pain. May your peace surround and comfort them. We pray with all people who are grieving today, who find it difficult to join in with the shouts of joy. May we all know your love and your hope. We pray with all people who live in fear today, who cannot celebrate today, with all in war zones, in situations of unrest and of violence, situations of uncertainty, hunger, poverty, and homelessness. May your love, God, be stronger than all evil, <coughs> and may it end all suffering. God of life, Hear our prayer. God of life, help us to be life affirming too. In our choices and words and actions. Help us to affirm your love and the life you offer in our relationships, in our communities, in the world in which we live, this Easter day and every day. God of life, hear our prayer. Amen. We close our Easter service by singing hymn number 419, Thine be the glory. Oh.
risen. He is risen.